We've got nice copper coat on the bottom of um, Salty Lass, but whoever put the copper coat on the keel have not done a very good job. It's got, um, it's basically just coming off the sheets. So that's another job to add to the list. Look how far that ruddy uh, hole has moved. Not great, Bev. Not great, Bev, at all. Now you should be able to push that back, shouldn't you? That's the theory. This should know. Tap through. While Bev's doing that, I'm basically uh, removing seal. Um, I was a bit dubious about it, but the problem is it's not good seal, so it's better to get rid of it and go back to start. It's very difficult to see, but. Um, there's a selection of um, pitting down here and there. You can just sort of see there's just very small holes and that's called pitting and um, basically I'm going to have to grind that all out um, so that um, the paint will be able to key on it correctly. So this is my current project and quite frankly it does not really want to leave the boat. On the outside it's all ground quite nicely and I had hoped it would tap through but no joy. So what I've got to do is work on it here on the inside. Um, the yard says just keep tapping it it'll eventually work itself loose so that's what I guess I'll do. But I've got the hose off and um, if you look very closely you can see that the um, the tail, the barb, um, is shattered. So this did need replacing. Uh, it's the worst through hole in the boat by a long, long way. And of course, it's the one that all the poo goes out of. So it's the worst through hole in the boat by a long way, in more ways than one. So after some hours of yelling, shouting, cursing, swearing, and doing a lot of other noisy things that vented frustration, I finally got another hole in the boat. And absolutely knackered. So, we're going to close the boat up for the night, and I believe you have some issues. Oh yeah, I can't close my through holes. That's mainly because Pev's put a whopping great big hole in the ready boat. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as for my coat, I'm afraid to say... It's filthy. It's absolutely filthy. Again! I know, but we'll but, wash We'll wash it one more time. I know, but I think... Um, this is where you got the millions. It is again a good thing I've got the mullions, but I think at one point or other I'll be getting some new. Um, yeah, a new offshore jacket. Yeah. New offshore jacket. But what the hell? <sighs> it's only money, you can't take it with you. Yeah. Another little job we have to do now that we've got the four stay down is to put this into the furling mechanism. Which this is? is. This is Selden Furlex grease, which is a special grease designed for it, and it is a rather tasteful blue colour. So you know when you've put it in because you've got blue grease everywhere. Yeah, so this is our um, further which we've given a good scrub. Not often you see it like this. <laughs> All nice Super and clean. Just. So I've put the grease in here and you might just be able to see some of the blue grease just, just on this section here. So this is the furler that goes at the top of the mast and runs up and down the foil. And I've also put it inside the other section of the furler down here at the bottom which has now been reassembled back. And the only place you can really see it on here is this section here. Other little fun jobs is replacing the anode, which is due in today. And the cleaned off keel. cleaned off keel will get um, special epoxy paint applied to it to um, keep it safe and preserved. Hey, what have you been doing while I've been asleep? <laughs> I've been putting...
seeing chip epoxy paint on the keel. This is the stuff they use on a lot of the aluminium boats around here. And according to a fellow in the yard who's the expert in these things, this stuff sticks to anything. If it sticks to aluminium, it can stick to this. It's safe to aluminium, but it's also safe to paint the sail drive leg with this before we antifoil it using a copper-free antifoil called Trilux. But this could have anything on top of it. So Masthead light, which we're checking off. Uh, it's incredibly windy here today. Um, we've had pleasant weather and then this arrived from somewhere. So, just a kiss him. Jesus. Okay, so the old aerial, TV aerial's coming off too. That's small, um, shitty death. remains of my Windex which I've just taken off the mast. Um, the actual Windex itself which was on this particular part here blew off in a storm before we bought the boat. So we've had this stump up the mast for the last year and I've finally taken it off. Um, it's very hard to get a replacement for this particular um, thing so I might as well just go out and buy a new one. This uh, lump of silicon was wrapped around the knot inside a very... whoops! <laughs> was wrapped round the nut inside a very tight fitting and it took ages to get it off. Um, the previous owner had a love affair with mastic. It's everywhere in the boat. I just keep picking it off. What are you lot playing with? Is that our new Windex? We've got our new masthead light which will replace the old one and um, this is a supernova masthead light and uh, <laughs> We knew it was full of these polystyrene beans, so um, which go everywhere. And this is the unit, and as you can see, it has no bulbs in it, or rather, no traditional bulb. What it has around the edge is a series of LEDs, which are coloured. So there will be a uh, red sector a green sector, a white sector, and then the other ones underneath are for the anchor light and they're all white and when they light up they, they light everything. But this is what's going on the masthead in place of our current masthead light. Uh, the other thing about this uh, particular masthead light is it has a very interesting switch. Oh yes. Uh, because uh, basically what happens... Hang on, hang on. Let me do the talking. I'm the one in front of the camera. That's... Okay. I know you're the electrician. Well, I'll try and do some electronics. Right. It also comes, as Gainer says, with this switch, um, which has uh, three positions, sort of middle. Um, the idea of this switch is it's a polarity reverser because the cable only has two wires. Because these are all diodes, the current only works in one direction. So by reversing the current um, on one set of diodes, it will work. And then when you reverse the polarity, the direction is set for the other set of diodes. So it will either be a triradial light at the top of the mast or an anchor light depending where I put this, but I still only need the existing two wire pairs that come up the mast, so I don't need to install a third wire, which is very, very useful. Yep, so I think that's a very, ha uh, very nifty idea, that. Very clever idea. So this will be installed down here in the cabin, and um, we just use the standard wiring, which will then run up the mast. Yeah, the only thing that has to be done is uh, currently our common goes to one single wire, uh, now, of course, uh, we're going to have to have the common separate. Yes, we are, because the um, power supply for the steaming light, uh, the deck light and the masthead light were all on the same common 12 volt line, Yeah, a common earth line. Yeah. So now we need a separate earth line for this, but it's no big deal. It's just an extra line that we just simply run from up there, round to the cockpit table. So um, small job, but nothing out of this world. Yep, sounds like a plan to me. Right, so these are the instructions which have come with it. 
This is a light. Put it at the top of your mast and switch on. Right, well that shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> Boy, is it blue. Oh yeah. Now we're talking a really good colour. <laughs> okay, so this is my area. Um, there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my roller in the middle. Yay! And I'm going to go up, and then I'm going to roll down to the bottom of my area. Okay, so that's my first one. I then go back up again. I've just finished painting the keel and I have to say she looks gorgeous. But I think of all the things I should have invested in before I did the job was a gardening mat because my knees have really taken it in the neck. Well, not really because they're knees, but if you know what I mean. But yeah.